Welcome, brothers and sisters around the world to Lifeline Bible Ministry. Today, God has a special message for you. Thank you for watching this video. Once again, you are welcome to the Fruit of the Spirit series. Thank you once again for watching this video. Thank you for subscribing if you have not done so already. And please, please share this video with your loved ones so that all of us shall remain blessed by the power of Jesus Christ. So Fruit of the Spirit series, part nine, which is walking in faith as a child of God. God is calling us to walk in faith. So the outline of this very lesson, we're going to define what faith is. We're going to look at living by faith. And then we're going to look at source of faith. How do I have faith? For some people, they have all the problems in the world on their head. So they constantly complaining, constantly they are the ones having problems. But what is the Bible really saying? Let's get into the lesson. A quick question for you. Why does the Holy Spirit give us faith to live? Why does the Holy Spirit give us faith to live? Why? Question two. Does faith mean you don't face realities of life? Does believing and trusting God mean when things are happening around you, you cannot see them. You cannot feel them. Is that what faith is? Let's get into the lesson. Define a radical faith. What kind of faith is God calling us into? As believers, don't forget we are living in the last days. There are many things happening around the world. People giving up their faith. People acting just anyhow. Is that a kind of faith God is calling us into? All the faith people exercise in God is only for things they need in life. Outside that, they don't really care whether God exists or not. What is the faith God is calling you and I to walk in? So we're going to start off with our foundational text from Galatians 5, 19 to 23. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Once again, what is the Bible saying here? The passage is giving us two scenarios. Scenario one, the works of the flesh. People who do not belong to God's kingdom, God's kingdom, that is their lifestyle. Adultery, fornication, all of that. That is what they do. That is the ways of the world. They can sleep with whoever they want. They can be drunk. They can do whatever. And they will still go to church on Sunday. Are these believers in the kingdom of God? The Bible says no. According to verse 21. The day which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if that is your lifestyle, if these are what you practice in life, then you cannot be part of God's kingdom. That's what the Bible is saying here. The verse 22 begins with but, means 
whatever is happening with the works of the flesh, what comes next is an opposite. The fruit of the spirit, that means the character of the Holy Spirit in the child of God is what? It's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Today, our focus is on faith. Faith as a product of the Holy Spirit in the child of God. Is the Holy Spirit who generates faith in the child of God. That is why faith is a fruit. This lesson, we're not going to be very exhaustive. We're going to pick all over the place and give you a general overview on what faith in Christ is and how does faith in Christ show up or manifest in the life of a child of God. So believers crucify the works of the flesh, but live after the Holy Spirit. Living in the flesh disqualifies someone from the kingdom of God. Don't forget. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit is faith, 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 faith. What is faith? We're going to take a dictionary definition of faith. Very basic. Faith means what? Complete trust or confidence in someone or something. For some people, they trust in their horses, they trust in their cars, they trust in their job, they trust in their money. They trust in what they can physically see and do. But what is faith to the child of God? That's our question. So if we bring this basic definition into the context of the faith of a child of God, we are talking about complete trust in Christ. It's a strong belief in God or in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. What the world calls proof is what you can put under the microscope. But faith in the word of God is different. So we are talking about complete trust in Christ. So who do you unquestionably trust? And why do you trust this person? This is a personal question to you. Who do you really, really trust without question? Is it yourself? Is it your mother? Is it your father? Is it your brother? Is it your sister? Is it your boss at work? Is it your husband? Is it your wife? Is it your child? Who do you unquestionably trust? That's a personal question to you. Some people say, I trust no one but me. Who do you really, really trust? And why do you trust this person? I want you to take a moment. If you don't trust no one by yourself, I want you to compare yourself to God. Do you trust yourself or you trust in God? Who loves you? Who has power to do all? I want you to begin to think about this very carefully. That is why we place our faith in Christ. He loved us first. He loves us. He is love. He knows all things. He has all power. Between you and Christ, who do you really think you have to put your faith in? Is it you or is Christ? What is the language of God? We are going to find out what the language of God is. When God is speaking, what is this about? So the believer enforces the mind of Christ to have the faith in Christ. I want you to take a moment to think about this. There are things in life that may cause you to think that probably Jesus does not even exist or God doesn't really care about your life. The answer to that is no. That is just the realities of life. There are spiritual entities, there are physical entities, there are different things happening. 
that will really throw your faith off sometimes. But you have to make up your mind and understand what Jesus sees, the mind of Christ that we need to have. What is the anchor on what should we place our faith? Are we going to place our faith on circumstances around us? Or are we going to place our faith on the one who has power over all things? I want to challenge you that you place your faith in the one who has power over all things. The one who loves you above all things. The one who knows all things. Who is Jesus. He is the very wisdom of God and the power of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 24. We look at how faith plays out. Luke chapter 18, verse 1 to 8. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, there was in a city a jack, which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, avenge me of my adversary. And he will not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by a continual coming she weary me. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? What is the passage saying? What is the Bible telling us? This is a parable that Jesus spoke that men ought always to pray. So the goal or the end of the parable is men ought always to pray and not to faint. And Jesus is making us aware that there was a woman who, went, who, who was a widow and went to a judge that please avenge me of my adversary. The judge will not budge. But after a while I say, no, if I don't do what she's asking me to do, she will weary me, she will wear me out. And the Bible is saying, verse seven, and shall not God avenge of his own elect? We cry unto him day and night, although it seems that God is lingering in answering unto us. He said, no, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. That's what Jesus is saying. Nevertheless, he's putting a question. When the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? This is a question Jesus is asking you and me. When he comes, will he find faith on earth? Will people exercise faith in him? And in the context of the passage, the faith is we crying out unto God. We pray unto God. When you have faith in God, you talk to him. Whatever situation you are confronted with, you go before God in prayer. So faith produces prayer. When someone has no faith, they do not pray. They don't care. They will live their life just as the world is living. They do not care whether God hears prayer or no, none of that. So the question Jesus is asking is, would he find prayerful people, people crying out unto God? Because they want to see the hand of God. They want to see the intervention of God. Faith produces prayer. Faith produces fasting. When someone is praying for something to change or some a situation to change and nothing is happening, they add fasting. Why? Because they know fasting produces more power in our prayer. 
So when someone has faith in Christ, their prayer life will tell you the person has faith. When they add fasting, it tells you the person's faith is strong. They trusted in God for the supernatural to happen. You read the Bible from Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 2. The Bible tells us the nature of God as the supernatural God, the miracle working God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our faith in God will cause us to be prayerful. People who do not pray simply means they don't care. God is out of their equation of life. They don't have God in that equation. That is why they are not praying. So exercising faith in God is shown in our prayer life. That's the first point you note. When someone has faith in God, they want to go to God and pray always. They are poor in spirit. They are needy in spirit. And they know that their source of life is God. So they will go to him daily basis. Will Christ find you and I in faith when he returns to earth? How is your prayer life? How does it look like? Radical faith in Christ does not back down nor back up. They don't stop. They don't linger. They, they do not quit. They pursue life in prayer. That tells you the person's faith is strong. They do not give up. They're confronted with challenges. They go before God in prayer. He is our source. That is why we pray. Look at Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. What is the Bible saying here? The verse 16 is talking about the gospel of Jesus. Is it the gospel is God's power to save us? Everyone who believes in the gospel is saved. So the first place of our faith is for salvation. It is to the Jew first and also to the Greek or to the Gentile. Everyone on earth, if we're going to believe in the gospel, we shall be saved. After we are saved, what next? The Bible says, in the gospel is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. So the basic faith for our salvation, it doesn't end there. It says, the just shall live by faith. So when you are a believer, you live by faith. You place your trust completely in Christ. Your day to day, what you eat, what you drink, shelter, food, your children. You place your life in the hands of Christ completely. That is what faith is about. That's what the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. Uh, you don't trust in your job. You trust in God who can keep your job. You don't trust in the money in the bank. Things can happen in your life that the money will just drain. You can have a health situation and all your money you save will be gone. You don't place your trust in money. You don't place your trust in the job you have. You don't place your trust in your spouse. You place your trust in Christ. He is the only one who is called faithful. That is why we trust in Christ completely with our life so that we live by faith on daily basis. So the Bible says the just lives by faith in Christ alone. 
not in Christ and in themselves or in Christ and something else. You place your faith completely in Jesus. Jude verse 20 is one chapter. So Jude verse 20. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. What is the Bible saying here? The Bible is telling us our faith is holy faith. Uh -huh. What does the Bible mean, holy faith? It means that our faith is exercised in holiness. Holy life produces faith, and faith produces holy life. You are going to live holy. Why? Because you trust in Christ. When someone claims they have faith in Christ, they trust in Jesus. You see holiness in their life. They will not live in sin. They will repent. That tells you the person has faith in God. They fear God. They fear Christ. So they will live holy. Our faith is holy faith. Holiness is a product of faith. Your prayer shows faith. You cannot claim you are a believer, I have faith in God, but your life is works of the flesh. Look at the works of the flesh. Which one of them are you practicing? And you still claiming to be a child of God? No. You are a child of the flesh, a child of the world. That is why your life is after the works of the flesh. But if you know Jesus, you begin to practice holy faith. You live in holiness, completely trusting your life into the hands of Jesus. But when you come to Jesus, you must repent of your sins and live in holiness. Trusting that whatever Jesus is telling you, that is what the truth is. That is the light for you and for me. According as it is written. So we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. What is the Bible saying? It says, we having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believe. And therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. What is that spirit of faith? It is the spirit that places faith in the child of God. Where is that spirit coming from? It says, according as it is written. Written where? In the scriptures, in the Bible. We need to understand. The spirit that gives us faith, the Holy Spirit, operates by the word of God. So according as it is written, that is what we believe in. If it is not written, we don't believe in it. We believe in what the scriptures is teaching us. Our faith is not fake faith. Our faith is not wanton thinking. It's not something people are imagining. No, our faith is according as it is written in the scriptures. That is what we believe. That is what we speak. If it is not according to the scriptures, it means it is not from the spirit of faith, but from another spirit, the anti-Christo spirit. If it is not according as it is written, that is not coming from Christ. So we take what the word of God is saying to us. That is God speaking. And that is what we believe. Look at Romans 4, 16 to 18. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. Listen carefully. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. 
as it is written, I've made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Powerful passage. What is the Bible saying? Let's break it down from verse 16 and bring it back together. Verse 16. He said, therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. So whatever is of faith attracts the grace of God. Listen carefully. When you are placing your faith in Christ, the grace of God comes upon your life so that you can exercise the faith in what the Bible is saying. If it is of faith, then it will be by grace. If it is not of faith, the grace of God will not be there. Listen very carefully. Huh? We look at verse 17. Say, Abraham is made a father of many nations. Why? Because he believed in God. The God who gives life to the dead. The God who calls those things which be not as though they were. That is the language of God. The language of God is faith. God calleth things which are not presently here as though they exist already. That's what we call the language of faith. You speak of things. They are not presently physically present. But you speak as though those things were. Huh? You need to understand. Having faith in God. In the promises of God. You place your faith in what God has spoken to you about. Why? Because it will happen. If God speaks it, it will happen. Still talking about Abraham in verse 18. He said, who against hope believed in hope? Why? Because when God said, hey, go and sacrifice. Abraham said, hey, am I going to sacrifice my son? So the Isaac, let's go. God will provide the sacrifice. He placed Isaac on the wood, about to kill him. And God said, don't do it. Abraham had hope in God that God will still provide the lamb for the sacrifice. So God says, do it. Abraham is doing it. Why? Because it is God who told him. Why? Because with God, all things are possible. Whatever God says must be done is what believers do. So the language of God is faith. He speaks of things to happen and they do happen. God called those things which be not as though they were. That is what language of faith is. Abraham against hope, believed in hope. Why? Because he's dealing with God. Whenever you're dealing with God, whatever God says, that is what you hang your faith on. God is the object of our faith. The object of your faith is not yourself. It's not your friend. It's not your parent. It's, it's none of that. It is God himself. If God does not hold your parent, they cannot support you. God does not hold your spouse. They cannot support you. You need to understand that. Don't be fighting this life with with just your human effort. Place your faith in Christ. So what is faith? Faith is the quality of God which makes us trust in Christ completely. It is the quality of God. It is part of God. The language of God is faith. So God gives us that capacity so that we trust in Christ completely. So it's a quality which comes from God. If God doesn't give us that, you cannot exercise faith in him. 
it comes from God. That's what you need to understand. For someone to even believe in Jesus, the Bible says the father has to draw the person. Otherwise, the person cannot come to Christ. So faith comes from God. Never forget by the foundation of that faith is salvation in Christ through the gospel. So the power of the Holy Spirit grants unto you that ability and capacity to trust in Christ completely. That comes from the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot exercise faith in Christ. No. So when the Holy Spirit is active in you, you trust the Lord Jesus completely with your life. No, with your no, you not trusting yourself as the source of all things. Well, as for me, I'm a single woman. I did this. I read all my children by myself. No, no, no. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Where is God in the story? Where did you place Christ? Is Jesus your source or the source is you? You can praise yourself if you think it's you. But we need to understand all things are of him, Jesus. He is the very power of God. When we place our trust in Christ, he makes all things possible. A question for you. What does lack of faith indicate in a person? When someone is not exercising faith in God, what does that indicate in the person? I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to think about this question. The person is not exercising faith in Christ whatsoever for anything to come to pass in their life through Christ. What does it indicate? Okay. The first thing it indicates the person is not safe at all. They have no connection with Christ. The first level of faith is faith in the message of the gospel for our salvation. After that, the just lives by faith. So when somebody is not exercising faith at all, it means they are not safe. Number two, when someone is not exercising faith, it simply means they don't, they don't have enough Bible knowledge. Because the Bible knowledge we have, our faith is based on, the, on what is written in the scriptures. So the more Bible knowledge the person has, true Bible knowledge, the person will exercise faith in Christ. Their prayer life will be different. They will begin to practice holiness. They will begin to fast. They will begin to pray. They will begin to call upon God. If they have very sound Bible knowledge, that is what they do. Lack of faith also may indicate someone under demonic influence. When someone is under demonic influence, they don't care what the word of God is saying. They don't have faith in Christ. They put God outside their life. Next, lack of faith also indicates that the person is not taking God by the word of God. They don't care what the word of God says. They don't. They don't care. Some of them, they know all things in life. They don't need the word of God. They are so full of pride and arrogance. They don't care what the word of God is saying. As for me, I'm a grandmama. Nobody can teach uh, the Kolewa old dog new tricks. They have all kinds of silly sayings they, they, they put out there. You have no idea. When someone is ignorant of the word of God, that is how they behave. The next thing that shows someone is not is lacking faith is they do not practice the word of God. The more you practice what the Bible teaches, the more your faith increases. The last thing, when someone is lacking faith, it means they are not praying. Prayer increases your faith. Why? Because you get connected to God. Remember the language of God is faith. 
You always want to pray again. You always want to exercise the faith that the power of God can do it. But when someone is showing lack of faith, these six things may be happening in the person's life. Now, when someone is having the spirit of anti-faith, the spirit that goes against faith, what do they show? Number one, they will not pray. When someone doesn't pray, it means the spirit of anti-faith is working in a person. They will not fast. Number three, they are whining constantly. Their life is just whining, negative talking. No, 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 no. This is not working well. No, 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 doing this. It's not good. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. Constantly whining. That is anti-faith spirit. The spirit of faith will cause you to pray and not to whine. Whining and prayer are not the same. The whining will undo your praying. Next, they are complete naturalists and realists. God is out of the equation of life for them. There is no space in their heart where God is actively working. They don't have that. That's why they don't pray. They put God out of it. Like actually praying for God to do something in their life, they will not do it. It, they just live like natural people are living. They care less about God. God is not part of the equation of life. When God is part of that, you will pray. You exercise faith. You trust in him completely. Next, when someone has an anti-faith spirit, they don't depend on what the Bible says. Actually, they hate the scriptures. The scriptures is the source of our faith. So when the spirit is against faith, they will be against what the Bible says. That spirit will cause the person not to trust in what the Bible says. Some of them, they have taught funny stories that will make people not trust that the Bible is trustworthy in their mind. The Bible is, is corrupted. Therefore, we don't have the word of God. So it's just anything. That is an anti-faith spirit operating in such person. Maybe you know people like that. It is time you pray for them. That that anti-faith spirit will go away from them. Then they will begin to trust in the Bible as the word of God. If someone says, oh, the Bible is corrupted. So we don't have any reliable Bible. We don't have it. Therefore, anything goes. All such persons, they are bound by the anti-faith spirit. Never forget that. Number six, they are sold out to contemporary mindset. What is that? Anything goes. Anything goes in life. Nothing matters. Find work to do, find pleasure, do this, do that, get property, marry, divorce, do this, do this. All of it. That is how contemporary mindset is. Nothing about God and trusting God and what God is saying. These signs will tell you someone is under the influence of anti-faith spirit. So they basically will rebel against God. Let's look at Romans chapter 10. We're looking at verse 15 to 17. And how shall they preach? Except they be sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who I believe our report. 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What? 
what is the Bible saying here? Preachers must be sent for them to preach. Is it how shall they preach except they be sent? How do we send preachers? You send preachers, you provide for them logistically. That is why we give offerings at church so that preachers will have to do the ministry. It's as simple as that. If we are not giving a church, it brings down how preachers will preach. Ministry needs money. Ministry, every ministry will need money. Every ministry. Verse 16. Not everyone will believe the gospel. That is true. We preach the gospel. Not all people receive and believe it and obey it. But we preach anyway. Verse 17. It says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God generates faith in us as we hear the preaching from anointed preachers. Our faith increases. Dear listener, please find a, a good, strong Bible teacher who will tell you the truth in your face. No sugar coating anywhere. As the Bible says, that is what the person will preach. Why? Because that will prepare you for heaven. Find one. And consistently be with a person. Why? Because God has a lot to give you through such preachers. It's very important. Don't be bouncing here and there like a butterfly. Find consistent, strong, sound Bible teaching and preaching. Sit under the person on a weekly basis and be encouraged to exercise faith in Christ. Then your faith will grow. By the power of God, your faith will increase. Your faith will grow. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what generates faith in us is God's word. As the word of God is applied to our spirit by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit combines with the word of God to generate faith in us and increase our faith in God. Faith, we live by faith and not by sight. Not by what I see. Not by what I hear, not by the circumstances around me, but by what the word of God is telling me. That is what I place my faith upon. So faith comes by hearing the word of God. Your faith will grow if you sit under an anointed teacher. Your faith will never be the same. The word of God generates faith in the believer so we can live by faith. But by God's design, the just shall live by faith. Day to day, we place our faith in God only. Day to day, that is the life God has called us to live. We place our faith in Christ only on daily basis. We go to sleep we hand ourselves over unto Christ to watch over us. We get up in the morning. We commit in the day into God's hands. We seek God, whatever is happening around us. We pray over it. The just shall live by faith. First John 3, 1 to 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it do not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. 
What is the Bible saying in this powerful passage of three verses? Let's break it down from verse one. Say, what manner of love the Father had bestowed, or bestowed means placed upon us. Powerful love. Why? That we should be called the sons of God. So that means the Father has drawn us into his kingdom. That is why the world doesn't know us. The Bible says, therefore, the world knows us not. The world doesn't know us. It doesn't understand us. It doesn't see us the way we are. Why? Because the world doesn't know God. God is outside their thinking. That's why the world do not understand you when you are living holy. The world will not understand you. The world wants you to live as the world. That when you are called by God as a child of God, you cannot live as the world is. That is why you cannot be practicing works of the flesh and still claim to be a child of God. No, it doesn't work like that. Verse 2, it says, now we are the sons of God. And it doesn't appear what we shall be. But this fact we know, that when Jesus shall appear, we shall be like Jesus. Why? Because we shall see him as he is. Nothing about Jesus will be hidden from us. Why? Because the very nature and body Jesus has, that is what we are going to have in the future. This is what the Bible is telling us. And every man who has this hope that Christ is coming for us, that man will purify his life, even as Jesus is pure. What does that mean? It means if you have the faith in the word of God that Jesus is coming back, how do we know that? Because that's what the Bible teaches. If you have this faith, you will purify your life. So faith in Christ will lead you to holy living. Eh? When someone has faith in Christ, they will live pure lives, holy lives, pure heart. The works of the flesh will be absent. The fruit of the spirit will be present. That tells you the person is saved. The person is living purified life. And they are making themselves ready for Jesus. What does this mean? It means faith in Christ produces holiness. So number one, faith in Christ saves us and gives us eternal life. So we get salvation by faith in the gospel so that we can have eternal life. It doesn't end there. We shall have the same body as Christ has right now. That's the body we are going to have when we are raptured. Now faith will make you live holy and prepare for the coming of Christ. Every child of God, faith will make you live holy. So when someone claims, I'm a child of God and they are not living holy, it means they don't have faith in Christ. Because faith in Christ will produce holiness in a person. We need to understand this. Because they, they, they have faith in what the Bible is saying. According as it is written, if your life doesn't measure up, remember many are called, but few are chosen. If your life doesn't measure up, you're not going to be part of the chosen. How does it work like that? Because that's what the Bible is teaching. We place our faith in what the scriptures is teaching us. So anyone who has this hope, in Christ will prepare for the coming of Christ. If someone is not preparing, they're living anyhow, it simply means they do not have faith in Christ. The just shall live by faith. Mark chapter 10, verse 27. And Jesus looking upon them said, with men it is impossible, but not with God. 
for with God, all things are possible. What? Jesus is making a statement here. Listen very carefully. With men, it is impossible. But not with God. <laughs> for with God, all things are possible. All things, all things are possible. I don't know what your situation is. The spirit of anti-faith will make you give up. The spirit that opposes faith will make you throw in the towel and say, no, I can't do this no more. You give up straight. That's why you run into the divorce court. You give up on your children. You give up on your new relationship you started. You've given up. You've thrown in the towel. You're whining. you done, yeah, 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 all that. Because you are looking at things the way natural human beings look at things. With natural human beings, they, they look at their physical strength, what they are made of, to determine the outcome. The outcome is based on what they can do as human beings. By faith, we look at what God can do, not what we can do, but what God can cause to happen. Why? Because with God, all things are possible. All things. I don't know what your situation is. You may not have brought it before the Lord, but when you bring your case and your situation before God, my brother, my sister, with God, all things are possible. When you know that with God, all things are possible, you will pray. You're not going to say, oh, this happened in my life. I don't understand, nya, 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 blah, 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 blah. All that, you will stop it. And you begin to go before God with whatever issue it is. By the power of God, that issue will be gone. No challenge <laughs> is bigger than God. No spirit is bigger than God. I don't know which spirit is pursuing your life. I don't know what power you are battling against. But I'm here to tell you today. By the word of God, no spirit, no power, no name is beyond the name Jesus Christ. Every knee bows to the name of Jesus. With God, all things are possible. That's why you exercise faith in God, not in what you can do. Eh? If you have faith in you yourself, then you are thinking of what you can possibly do. But faith is what God can possibly do. So the question is, what can God possibly do? The answer is all things. So whatever situation you have, I want to encourage you today. Let your faith rise up in Christ. No situation or no spirit is a match against Jesus. When he shows up, Every power bow, every knee bows. Every situation is dissolved. Never lose faith, never lose hope. The God we, we serve is the God of impossibilities. With men, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Genesis 18, verse 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. This is a quiz God gave unto Abraham. There is anything too hard for God to do. Abraham, you are an old man. You are what, 99 years old. Your wife is past 80 years old. And you, God, you telling me I'm going to have a son? Yes, sir. Humanly speaking, this is impossible. God says, with God, all things are possible. When God says it, we believe it, we receive it, we pray about it, and it happens. He said, at the time appointed, I will return. 
according to the time of life to when he God returns. Sarah will have a son. He, God himself, is coming. He's not sending an angel. Say, I will return unto thee. He didn't say, I'll send an angel. I, God, will return. And your wife, you think, cannot have a baby in the womb. Your wife will have a baby. She's way past a prime, over 80 years old, to become pregnant. Abraham, you are 99 years old. How many men 99 can produce children? God says, with me. <laughs> is anything too hard? My brothers, my sisters, is anything too hard for Christ? The answer is no. Our God, Jesus Christ, makes the impossible happen. He's the God of impossibility. Whatever your situation is, it is no match against the power of the Holy Spirit. I need for you to understand it. Faith will drive you to pray. Whatever your situation is, faith in Christ will make you pray. Not go on social media and talk. It does, that doesn't bring solution. The solution comes when God visits by the power of the Spirit of God. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Whatever God says, that he will do. <laughs> Hallelujah. What has God told you? What dream did God give you? That is what God will do. God watches to perform his word. Faith, therefore, anchors on the word of God, what God has spoken. That's what faith anchors on. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, you cannot please God. To doubt God is insulting. God, you are all powerful. I don't believe that. It's very insulting for us not to exercise faith in God. In other words, we're telling him he's not who he claims to be. That's why for us to be able to please God, we please God by faith. You see, because he that comes to God must believe that God exists. And God will reward you if you diligently seek God. I'm praying for you today that you will diligently seek Christ so that he will reward you. Let your faith come alive so that you will please Christ and the Lord will reward you. Okay? We're wrapping up with our pop quiz. I'm going to give you 60 seconds. What is faith in Christ? Question two. How do believers obtain faith? I'm sorry, not goodness, faith in Christ. Question three, why does Christ give us faith? Question four, how do we get more faith after salvation? Question five, what shows someone is living by faith? You have 60 seconds to respond to them. 60 seconds, let's go. Okay, our 60 seconds is up. So what is faith in Christ? Answer. 
is Christ giving capacity to trust him, Christ, completely. Question two, how do believers obtain faith in Christ? Not goodness, faith in Christ. How do we obtain it? Answer, from the power of the Holy Spirit. Question three, why does Christ give us faith? Answer to walk in the realm of Christ, which is the word of God. The word of God is what prescribes the realm of Christ to us. So as we enter into the word, we anchor our faith in the word. We are walking in the realm of Jesus. That he has called us to walk in. That's the kingdom of God. Question four, how do we get more faith after salvation? Answer. By hearing the word of God, therefore get sound teaching and sound teachers. Question five, what shows someone is living by faith? Answer, number one, holiness. Number two, prayerfulness. Number three, no worldly compromise. No, that tells you the person is living by faith. With that, we come to the end of this message. God richly bless you. And please, thank you so much for watching this video. We would like for you to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and please, please again, share this video with others for them to watch also. God richly bless you. See you again.